Hello everyone. What you're looking at is my model of the Protector from Galaxy Quest. You know that movie where they run around screaming, never give up, never surrender. I entered this in the SMA Spring Contest last year. Um, there's a reason why we're looking at her. Let me turn her a little bit. I am doing a lighting tutorial for the Millennium Falcon for the October group build over at SMA. And I wanted to bring this out just so you guys could see a lit up model and that I, I, I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to lighting. All right, there's a few features on this model like the top ship does come off and a little fiddling and she will light back up as you can see. That was no minor accomplishment. Let me get some light on the subject so that we can actually talk a little bit about what's going on here. Okay, and you can see some lighting on her now, and you can still see the engines are lit. All right, now, part of why I'm bringing this up is, I just want to show you guys that I have done model lighting before. I'm not a noob at it. This isn't the first time, okay? This is not the first time I've done model lighting. This video right now is going to be over basic tools, the basic tools we need to light a model, okay? It's not, we're going to have three or four videos before I actually get into lighting the Millennium Falcon. I just want to go over some basics, tools you need, and a few other things you need before we get started on this. But just to get back to this a little bit, just so everyone can follow along with it. All right, now, the engines here were lit with LEDs. You can see them. The engines in the back were also lit with LEDs. Let me spin her around. You can see them lit. There's very few hot spots on this model. I use quite a bit of fiber optic on this model too. That's how I got the wing lights to light. And if I were to, yeah, there. Now you can see the lit, wing lights are lit when I block some of the ambient lighting out. Okay, that was fiber optics. The lighting on the main body of the ship is fiber optics. The main ship up here is lit because there are two conducting mesh screens here that connect with two conducting pins up at the top and it is held on with magnets. Now, what makes this even more fun, and I'm going to drop the camera a little bit, is in the front of this we have a little scene here with the rock monster and Tim Allen. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit because we can't see everything. There we go. Now, when I grab Mr. Rock Monster here, watch the ship. I move the rock monster, the lights go off. I use the rock monster as the switch for the ship. I use something called a magnetic reed switch to accomplish this. Okay? There's a magnetic reed switch embedded in this rock, and Mr. Rock Monster has a magnet in his back, so when he's put in a certain place, the ship lights up. All right. Now that we've discussed this model and a few things I've done with it, let me go stop for a second get my tools laid out and let's talk about the basic tools we need to do model lighting. These are the basics. These are not everything you could possibly use. These are the minimum tools you're going to need. All right, I'll be back in a second. Everyone, I got quite a mess arrayed on the desktop because I want to talk about quite a bit of things. I'm talking about basic tools and supplies for lighting. I'm not talking about absolutely everything you need. I'm talking about the bare minimum. Keep that in mind, okay? First thing we're going to talk about are cutters. Now, a lot of you have side cutters for working with models. You know, some of these. Now, I didn't buy this one specific for models. This one's for electronics because it's basically the same thing you buy for models. The model side cutters are $10. The one for electronics are 3 and there's really no difference between them. I mean, there's no nicks or nothing in this blade because I only use it for plastic, and that's the trick. If you buy one of these, use it only for plastic, and you won't nick it. All the tools up here are used only for electronics. I never touch them on models, so keep that in mind. I have separate tools for models and electronics. Okay, what this is is a universal wire stripper. You can buy the wire strippers with the different wire gauges on it. I don't need those. I'm working with the same gauge all the time. This little nut right here allows me to adjust the cutter up here. So I strip away for the pr proper size wire. You just loosen this, slide it up and down, and adjust. And down further, it'll cut the wire. Up here, it'll strip the wire. That's all I need. I don't need a fancy one. This was cheap, a couple of bucks. These guys, I got our Harbor Freight tools. 
I'm going to be honest, I don't use all four of these very often. I use the side cutters for cutting wire with. I use these big flat pliers all the time for bending my um, LEDs and helping me wrap wire around LEDs for soldering. Don't use these two. I bought them. They weren't expensive. Again, Harbor Freight Tools about a buck a piece. So I have them, but I rarely use them. I mainly use these two. Okay? And you can get away without this one if you use this. So right now, the minimum tools you need are these two. And you can probably get away without using this if you use a good pair of tweezers in its place. But again, we're talking like four dollars, three dollars here, five dollars, about six dollars for the lot of them. Your choice on whether you want to spend that money or not. Okay, now we talked about side cutters. The next thing we're going to talk about is this guy way over here. Let's bring him up forefront in the camera. Helping hands. This is a necessity. Okay, you need you can't solder and hold things at the same time. It's impossible. You need a hand or two for soldering. That you use this to hold your stuff. I'm going to show you that when I do a soldering video. Don't need the magnifying glass. I never ever ever use this magnifying glass. I'm about to take it off there. It just gets in the way. I bought this at Radio Shack. You can get them cheaper at places like Harbor Freight Tools. Harbor Freight Tools sells a version of this. Even with the magnifying glass for half the price you get the one at Radio Shack. So I'd go to Harbor Freight Tools because you know, I, I hear from friends all the time, Harbor Freight Tools has crappy tools. Well, that's true if you're going to use the tools on an everyday basis, like a uh, miter saw. This thing, I can't see spending a lot of money on one of these. The one at Harbor Freight Tools is going to work just as well as this one did. Save your money. Go to Harbor Freight Tools. But you're going to need a pair of helping hands. No way around that. Okay? If I have the time, I'll put a link in the bottom to Harbor Freight Tools versions of all this stuff. So those of you who like to order on the internet can just order away. Alright? But I still think, don't need the magnifying glass, but you do need one of these. And this is also nice because I hold my soldering iron. That way I don't have my soldering on laying around just blowing heat everywhere and melting stuff. That's not good. Okay, up next after that, let's talk about soldering irons. Okay? This is the soldering iron I use. And you don't need to spend a lot of money on a soldering iron. This one was, I didn't buy necessarily the cheapest one I could find. I went to my home improvement store and bought this one. It's gotten hot and touched a few things it shouldn't have. You can see that right there. But it works very well. It has a pilot light in it that tells me it's on. Okay. Interchangeable tips. I can take this tip out. All I have to do is unscrew it. In fact, I need to go buy a new tip before I get into this project because that tip's pretty much burnt up. The tips do burn up over time, so you want something with an interchangeable tip on it. Okay? What you do not want is one of these. All right? Let me explain why. This doesn't put out a hell of a lot of heat. And if you're really going to get serious on this, I'd go buy one with a control station so you can vary the heat and a bunch of other stuff. I didn't buy that. I didn't see the need for it. It was like four times as expensive as this, and this will work just fine. This is for, like, soldering or brazing pipes. Now, this thing dumps out way too much heat, and here's why heat is a problem. If we get into timing chips, and I'm going to do a video on two different timing chips in a little bit because I intend to use one of them on the Millennium Falcon, so I'm blinking lights all over the cockpit. This thing's going to put out so much heat, it's going to fry the timing chip. There's no way you can solder a timing chip with one of these. It just dumps far too much heat. Plus, one of these costs a lot more than one of these. So do yourself a favor, get one of these. A little soldering iron, not a big soldering gun. Too much heat from the soldering gun way too much heat. Yeah, I made that mistake and bought this before I figured that one out and I burned up a couple of LEDs just trying to solder them together with this thing. Thinking, oh, bigger is better. Not in this case. Bigger is too much heat. Just fries everything. Get yourself a small soldering gun. Iron. You'll be happy with it. Doesn't put out too much heat. Soldering um, timing chips with this is easy. Alright, so there we got our soldering iron. We've discussed that issue. So, up next is solder. Pick yourself up some solder. Uh, you don't have to go crazy with the solder. Just a small little reel of it. Small diameter solder will work great. 
plus you can use this to imitate wires and stuff on the ship so put your electronics together and then you can bend it and it's really soft so I don't know how much you'd want to use this to imitate pipes on the ship but you could you can also use brass rods for that and I that's what I intend to do if I replace any of the piping on the ship on the Millennium Falcon I'm gonna use brass rods not this stuff but get yourself some solder you're, you're gonna appreciate having the solder there it'll make you happy because the soldering iron comes with some but it doesn't come with enough so pick up a tube of solder, solder while you're at it next thing you're gonna need is power supply now let's talk about that for a second when you are supplying power to your model there's a couple of considerations to keep in, in mind. You can go over to your local uh, electronic supplier and get a battery box like this. You can get these on eBay, you can get these on the internet, you can go to DigiKey. There are so many different places you can go to buy these things. They're not expensive. I use them quite often. I use The model you just saw, I was using these on that model. All the lighting on that model is powered by two AA batteries and I've had that thing lit one day for six hours and those are the same batteries it's not gonna burn them up the batteries up real quickly if you don't use many batteries and there's the key um, I only use batteries to supply lighting to models if I'm using fewer than six LEDs anything over six LEDs I'm gonna go with the wall wart okay you don't have to get this particular brand of wall wart I got this at a big department store it's got adjustable voltage on it so I can select my voltage. You, we're, we're not going to need that from Millennium Falcon. I'm going to go with 12 volts. So you can just go find a 12 volt a power adapter. You can use any old power adapter. If you've got an old cell phone and on the power adapters it will say what the voltage is. Uh, I'm not, I can't show you that on this one because it's an adaptable one but if you look at the back of the power adapter or the wall wart it will say how many volts it supplies and how many milliamps it supplies. We're going to talk about that more when we get to the LEDs. I'm going to do a segment just on LEDs. We'll talk about that more. I'll get a wall ward out then and show you that. Okay? But I'm going to go with 12 volts from Millennium Falcon. So you can just look for one of these that says 12 volts. And you'll be good. Alright? So I'm not going to use batteries on Millennium Falcon. I'm going to have too many LEDs in that for batteries. The engines are going to be lit with LEDs. I'm going to be using this sort of thing for lighting the engines okay so too many LEDs for you're gonna to have to go with wall wart we're gonna plug this thing in no batteries but fun part is you don't have to permanently wire it to your display stand what we have here are a DC power plug this is a size N I like the size end because it happens to fit a brass tube almost perfectly on the end. I can glue this on the end of a brass tube and suppress my model on that brass tube. And here is the connecting plug. I use this plug in the model. Here, let's zoom in on that a little bit so you guys can get a better look at this. I use this plug in the model and this adapter plugs into it on the brass tube so I just rest the model on that I should have showed you that on the protector okay because that's what I do on the protector so we're gonna get our power from the model with these and we're gonna use one of these to power our model okay now if you get more advanced and spend more time on working with models you can get something let me show you 